Hello world, and welcome back to another exciting episode of the Advanced Wars by Web Grand Strategy Cast. Today's episode, we're going to be covering my turn on day 33 of my Asia Grand Strategy Campaign. But first, a Wars World news update covering everything that's happened since our last episode. Starting with Cobalt Ice, who follows immediately after me in the turn order. So right off the bat, Cobalt Ice is very close to finally reclaiming that port in the north, and that will be a huge advantage for him if he can start putting out ships or battleships from that direction, but will his attempt to retake the peninsula be any more successful? He even lands some troops on Red's territory, but the big concern is Red has de facto control of his headquarters, and at this rate it's only a matter of time until Cobalt falls. Seeing this, Blue Moon is trying to make some territorial gains where he can. He's going to start capturing that island in the island chain. Now that factory was not super important to Red, nor do I believe it will be super important to Blue Moon, but just taking that away from him gives a slight advantage to Blue Moon and takes it away, that especially that income, from Red. Now Red deals a large amount of damage with his battleships, to Cobalt Ice here, and you can see not only does he do a huge amount of damage, but he's got a full 10 health infantry on Cobalt's HQ that has started to capture, so that HQ only has 10 points remaining on it. Same with that property and that mech along the coast there. And that's going to take us to our turn on day 33. So this will be a rather interesting turn. I've got a couple things I need to prepare for. First of all, I need to recover from this Typhoon as soon as possible. Secondly, I do believe that Blue Moon will have a Typhoon of his own with which to use next turn. So that's something I also need to be acutely aware of. Simultaneously, Cobalt Ice is very near to actually falling and being completely eliminated from the game which is a possibility that I need to prepare for and I need to be ready to reach out and start gobbling up Cobalt's territories as soon as possible if that is to occur. Meanwhile, I actually have an agreement with both Cobalt Ice and Blue Moon that I will capture their ports here and start building battleships up here. For Cobalt Ice, I assured him I would use these battleships to help him fight off Red, which I fully intend to do. To Blue Moon, I kind of made an agreement that I would stop having so many battleships down here in the south and I will instead start operating them out of this port in the north to combat Red as well. Now neither of these guys knows about the agreement I made with the other, so hopefully neither of them notice or mind that I'm capturing not one but two ports at the same time. But if they kind of let this go and I manage to pull it off, not only will that be two ports that I can control in the north, but that's also going to be an additional income of 2,000 that's going to be coming my way each turn. And both players have essentially agreed to give me these ports in exchange for small favors. Now, realistically, I would love to have a battleship up north here. Uh, just kind of holding down this section, keeping Blue Moon from getting too aggressive and really being able to put the hurt on Cobalt or Red if I need to, which is going to keep them real friendly with me. Meanwhile, a control of a port here in Blue Moon's territory would really just allow me to put down a battleship on this port whenever I want it to, which would essentially give me a huge amount of indirect firepower within this area at any point in time. Finally, in addition to just generally needing to respond to this Typhoon and the Typhoon that will probably come up next turn, I really need to be concerned for this fleet here. I just sent them out to sea and now they've taken two damage, they're probably about to take four damage next turn. So I need not just one, maybe not even just two black boats to refuel and repair these ships. It could potentially be very difficult for me to operate this fleet so far away from home and without a port to support me. And finally, if it looks like Blue Moon is going to have a Typhoon of his own next turn, he might just use that opportunity to try to do some damage to me with the Typhoon and then go in for the kill with all his units he's got lined up there. I feel fairly confident in my defenses and my ability to defend myself, but Blue Moon might just see this as the last opportunity he has to try to go for a killing blow against me. So. Well, I hope that doesn't happen, and I have no necessary reason to believe that it will happen next turn. It is indeed something that could happen, and I need to be prepared for it. 
So as always, let's start off in the north here where we can. Um, I think I think when we compare my lines to Cobalt's lines, the big thing that stands out to me is that I'm being a little more defensive with my territory. I'm only holding territory out to this mountain range, which is fairly close to some of my properties for refueling and repairing. Meanwhile, Cobalt has a lot of troops along the border here, but now they've taken another two damage. They might take another two next turn. So you could see this infantry down to two health and four fuel. And at that point, Cobalt really needs to be asking, what purpose is this infantry even serving here? It's not much of a border guard against me, and he couldn't really pose much of a threat to me. So I'm not too majorly concerned about the north. Especially because Cobalt is playing as Sammy, so he's not going to have a Typhoon of his own to drop on me when he wants to, although I do need to be very careful about victory marches. So I think to weather the storm, my best bet here might actually be to move that infantry down there in order to start getting his heels in. Move this tank here, because it's actually not damaged whatsoever this turn, so we will... Uh, you know, let's just put it right there. And you hold there. Now I probably actually should not have unloaded this mech this turn, knowing that there was a Typhoon coming. But what I can do is actually keep this guy in the APC, and that'll keep him safe from uh, at least next turn's Typhoon. And I'll place my APC there just so he's ready to respond should anything come this way, and he can engage it from the mountaintops. I think I will leave this tank here for now, just to hold the line, and when it can actually reach this city is when I'll go in for some repairs. Meanwhile, this mech here will also hold so that it can start getting its repairs right away. All these infantry I will just join together after the storm hits and hopefully recover my entire defensive line back up to about 10 health as I have been doing. But for now, these units will just hold where they're at. So I do want to prioritize getting this rocket onto a city, not only so that it can repair this damage, but also the damage likely coming next turn. I want to be prepared for that. This APC cannot go very far, but let's get it out of the way. Let's get that rocket there. And I think these guys, I think these guys will also hold their positions for now, and I will focus on trying to repair them back up once the storm has passed. In the center here is where I am most worried about a blue moon incursion. So this is a little puzzle I'm going to have to figure out and Tetris everything together just perfectly. Now the tanks I have on properties, of course, were repaired back up to 10 HP, and I do suspect that I will get hit with another Typhoon next turn, but what I will do is I will try to juggle everything around in such a way in order to maintain the best defensive posture with the possibility of yet another Typhoon. And I think that would look something like this. Eight hit points go there. That means his ten hit points can move forward. This eight hit points can park on this property here. I think I'll actually move both of these rockets upward slightly. That will get some repairs in next turn and that will hold here. It's important that this rocket holds here because that's what gives me coverage over this medium tank. That's the greatest leverage I have over Blue Moon right now, is if he tries anything funny, that medium tank is going to be the first to go. And then this rocket will have paid for itself immediately by eliminating this medium tank. And that does also give me the perfect opportunity to move one more tank up here and try to grab some repairs on it next turn while I can. Now it might be best to just get this infantry up to the front as soon as possible, but I think I'll actually delay a little bit so that I can grab a turn of heals off of this property at the start of my next turn, and then this guy will do the same if he gets hit by a Typhoon as well. This back here will of course wait, and we'll just keep on waiting until this guy is finally repaired and back in the fight. And of course, these mechs get battered by Typhoons before they can even do anything. But such is life, so I will move them back as I had planned to gather some repairs on these properties before moving back forward. And if I can keep two layers of mechs at all times, then I can actually cycle them out with each other as necessary. And what I can actually do, since I am at 99 out of 100 unit cap, is I can move this tank here. And then I've got a nice battery, three tanks deep, that I can just launch right into blue should I need to. But that also allows me to move this tank right here for some more repairs. And then, because I have so many damn units right now, I can actually move things up and together 
That'll put it back at 10. It will probably get hit by another Typhoon next turn, but I just want to make this very unenticing for Blue Moon to attack. From here, I will continue my infantry advance. And then I can continue the infantry advance up along this way. Just like this. Then I can hold that there with a mech. And yeah, that will allow me to hold my lines while at the same time maximizing my repairs for this turn and the next. And here I can jigger everything around just a little bit. Like that. You hold there. And you get some repairs up there. Meanwhile, this medium tank will hold, fall back. Get some repairs right there. This AP can move up here, get some supplies in. That'll be nice. We will keep the mech in there, nice and safe from the Typhoon next turn. Meanwhile, this mech move in down there and hold right there just to solidify the line. Continue to move this infantry in and consolidate all my territory. Let's load you up in here. Everybody else hold along the line. And of course, let's hold with these rockets. Now, like I said, even with the rain, this rocket can reach this property fairly easily. So as soon as I'm done getting all my necessary repairs on this medium tank, I'll move it back up to the front and then start repairing this rocket. Meanwhile, this rocket will provide even still a bit of a deterrent, even at 8 health or even 6 health. Um, it will still be unpleasant for Blue Moon to want to charge through that. So for now, they will also hold. So that takes care of everything except unit production, my fleet movements, and my special capture missions. For the captures, I am going to go in for both ports at the same time and hope that I can pull this off. Uh, two additional ports to my territory would be hugely beneficial to me. Fortunately, with both of these captures, uh, even with the unit being at 8 health, that's going to bring these properties down to 12 points. Even if I get hit with a Typhoon next turn, and that brings me down to 6, it will still only be two more turns of capture on both of these properties. So hopefully, that'll work out for us. With only three fuel remaining, and probably another Typhoon coming again next turn, I'm not exactly sure what to do with this APC. This one HP APC that, at this point, has been so damaged by typhoons it can actually no longer be damaged any further by typhoons. I think what might be my best bet and what might actually be kind of clever is if I move the APC here. Now I'm not exactly sure if an APC can refuel ships out at sea or ships in a shoal, but we're about to find out. Now last but not least, we gotta figure out what to do with my fleet. They've already taken two points of damage across the board because of the Typhoon, and that's going to be another two points of damage next turn with another Typhoon. So how does one optimally keep this fleet running, fueled, and fighting? I could either break my convoy into two smaller fleets, one that I repair up at the docks and one that I repair up with my black boats out at sea. I could then join them together later. That would probably be the cheapest and the most convenient. At the same time, do I really want to split my fleet up? They seem relatively unchallenged on the seas for now. Blue Moon, even, is certainly in no condition to try to take me on. However, I don't know where or how many submarines there are out there, which is fairly scary to me. This cruiser is mostly a sacrificial piece, so I would not mind losing it. However, these subs, and especially these battleships, are way more expensive, and I really don't want them getting into too much of a risk of engaging the enemy if they are not at full health. But even just doing that could take me a while. You know, I think what might be best here, not just for my fleet, but also for my production, is if I take this black boat out here, and actually use that to repair the submarine. Repaired and refueled, the submarine can now go forward and even hide. Beautiful. Now this second black boat can come forward here and repair this submarine that is actually submerged. Now again, refueled and repaired, I can move this guy further so that you can now go out to 
here and wait and continue to clear a path forward for me and for the rest of the convoy. And we can move our battleships forward like so. And as I'm actually at 98 out of 100 population cap at the moment, I will use my last two population spots for two more black boats for this fleet. So a fleet of five ships with four supporter ships should be fairly self-sufficient, which is going to be important for me if I'm going to be operating in these waters, far from home, getting hit with typhoons, engaging with submarines and engine fleets, and at the maximum population cap. You can see I actually can't purchase any new units. So now I just need to focus on repairing my units, keeping them at maximum hit points, and upgrading my units to better versions over time while still remaining within that 100 population cap. Then I will continue to hold my cruiser here as a bit of a guard against any sort of blue moon tomfoolery uh, on my convoy. Now I would say holding this infantry on this port is actually a poor move on Blue Moon's part. He doesn't get any sort of advantage by actually holding infantry on this port. Yes, it does mean that an enemy couldn't send like a lander or a black boat with an infantry and unload that infantry onto this port, but that's not something that's really been happening. You know, there's there's been no threat of Blue losing this island this entire match. Meanwhile, this infantry standing on this property tells me that he does not have a submarine here constantly refueling. And here's a little thing for you if you didn't know this. If you have a submarine on a port, you can hide it so that the enemy cannot see it. It will be submerged so they won't see it, they won't know where it is. Meanwhile, because it's sitting on a port, it's constantly refueling every single turn. So in reality, you have a submarine submerged in your port area and it looks to your opponent like nothing is there. Meanwhile, you actually have a hidden submarine that is constantly repairing and constantly refueling. So something like that could actually make for a fairly nasty surprise to your opponent if they're not actually expecting you to have a submarine on this property, well then he could just come out and do a lot of damage to me, especially if I wasn't being so careful about it. But because he has this infantry on this property, I know that of course he does not have a submerged sub hidden there. So I, I feel a little bit more comfortable going on by this island because I know there is no sub here. Now that's not to say that there aren't submarines elsewhere in this area and I might just run into a few of them, but I really wanted to give myself the best chances so I left a cruiser here to sort of guard the convoy and I just know that my opponent does not have a submerged sub waiting for me. Okay, and with everything out of the way, everything taken care of, and no more room left to build, I shall end my turn. So thank you for joining us for another exciting episode of the Advanced Wars by Web Grand Strategy Cast. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for coming back and following along with us. If you are a first-time watcher, well, I really hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for checking it out. And if you liked it, maybe even consider subscribing so you can see a little bit more of this stuff. And, you know, like the video, leave a comment, blah, blah, blah. You know the drill. It really helps us out. But thank you so much for that. And, hey, maybe check out some of these recommended videos, some of this other stuff that I made. It might just be your can of soup. All right. Thank you for joining us, and I'll see you in the next one.